Hi, this is Stephanie from Always in Stitches, Noblesville, Indiana, coming to you to do a little video on our Skyline 7. We have a few of you out there that have purchased from us that have had some questions, so I just want to go over the machine with you and let you know what it comes with and how to use the things it, com it comes with. Sitting here in our joy room here at the store where we have lots of quilts hanging, uh, just a fun room to be in. So anyway, I'm going to go over this just like I do if I'm teaching a class. So to start with, this is the Skyline 7. I've taken off the extension table that fits here so that I can show you the machine, show you how to change the presser uh, plate. Um, so that's why that's off. This is all of the accessories that comes with the machine. And one by one, we're going to go over each of these. And I've got some scrap fabric here to show you what each one of these does and what's different about one to the other. Um, I'm going to start with the front of the machine. This is the on-off button. It will make the machine go, stop, or start. You can also use the foot pedal. pedal. This machine comes with this huge foot pedal cord wraps around the back so when it's not in use you can put it away and without worrying about where the cord is. I use the start stop button when I am demoing the, a machine because it's easier for me to do that than to use that. But this machine does come with the, a big foot pedal. Right on top of the start stop button is the reverse with the little arrow. This is a locking stitch, and when you hit that button, it will lock your stitch. It does four stitches in the same spot to lock your stitch so that it won't come undone. This is needle up, needle down. You want to use that every time you get ready to thread your machine to make sure your needle is in the highest position so that the needle threader works. This is, uh, this will lower your foot. And this is the um, scissor cut, cuts your thread for you. This is the speed governor. Go fast or slow, however, that, however you want, uh, whatever you're comfortable with. So that's the front of the machine. And this is the base of all of the stitches. We start off with the utility stitches. There are two pages. If you look here at the top, it always is going to show you how many pages of stitches there are by looking there. And the utility stitches are the very utility stitches are the very start of the program. If you look at the top of the the top of the machine, it also lists them in order: utility, button, applique, heirloom, quilting, and all of the different stitches that comes with this machine. And you can get to them by turning the pages here. One. Now we're in quilting, now we're in utility. Oh, foot was down. Uh, not sure why it's doing that. Stop. <laughs> why is, okay, now we're on the utility screen. And if you push one of these two buttons here, it's gonna go forward or backwards. Utilities have two different pages of stitches. You go to the next one, it's going to be the buttonhole, two pages of stitches. Then it's going to go across all of them that are up here on the top of your machine. You can go page by page by page to get to these different stitches, or you can hit this little decorative stitch icon. And when you hit that, that brings up every one of these categories. So you can go straight to quilting. You don't have to go page by page by page to find the quilting stitches. You can hit the icon and it will take you straight to them. And in the quilting icon, you it will automatically move your foot to a quarter inch position by touching stitch number two. Stitch number three is a seven millimeter. Stitch number four is a stretch stitch, but it has six pages of quilting stitches in this category. So you can jump to any one of those, or you can page by page go to them. 
Then the next, uh, go back to utility, the next button that you can push on the front of the screen is the alphabet. And it takes you to the alphabet where you have three different choices. And you can um, put it, make a quilt label. You can just uh, create a saying, whatever you want to do on, on this page, just go with the alphabet. And then it also shows that there's three pa there's three pages of, of letters and numbers on this particular font. So you just put it in A B C D. Then you could stitch that out, and that's what will uh, show. If you push this button right here. Oh, right there. Um, you can, you could, it will show you everything that you've got going, starting with, if I had filled this up with uh, a saying or a poem or just something fun to say, it would all, it would show up how it's going to stitch out. That is right in this area here, right where your ABCs are. So that's kind of cool that you can do that. And then the next um, icon on the screen that you can hit is the t-shirt quilt, the t-shirt. This is my favorite part of this machine. It's, that's considered sewing applications. So whatever you want to do sewing wise, you hit that t-shirt and it's gonna take you right to that category. If you're gonna make something that has gathering on it, it automatically changes the length of your stitch and it tells you what foot to use. If you're easing stitching or if you're gathering. It, um, it's great, great, great for anything that you want to do. You're going to do a rolled hem. It tells you what foot to use, and it gives you different options on how you can use that foot. If you want to do over edge, like a, this would be like a serger stitch. Well, it gives you four different ways that you can use, this, um, uh, four different types of stitches where you can use that foot. Great, great, great time saver because all you have to do is go to the t-shirt and pick the category. One of, one of my favorites, of course, because I'm a quilter, is patchwork. And with patchwork, it tells you what foot to use, the O foot, moves your foot over to a quarter of an inch spot, tightens your stitch so that when you are cutting it, cutting with many quilts, with quilting, you cut a lot. This will tighten your stitch so that they don't come unraveled. And um, it also ha does another thing that I re I'm really crazy about that I'll show you later, okay? So we're going to go back to the utility stitches, and we're going to go through the feet. Well, first we're going to load, first we're going to thread the machine. <clears throat> Here at the store, we use Orifil. We love Orifil. It's, it's a very clean. It's made in Italy. It's a 50 weight, but it's two ply, so it's... It just doesn't have the length that some of the other uh, threads have. Currently, if you're new to Orifil and you want to get a uh, inventory of different colors, we have a great program going on right now. It's the Orifil Club. We have it in two different weights, a 40 weight and a 50 weight. 50 is what most of us use for stitching, for quilting, I mean. And then 40 is more for embroidery or decorative stitches because it's a little bit heavier. And every month, there's a different color combination. And with these color combinations, you get one of these little totes. Um, by the end of the program, you'll have three of these totes with the different colors in it. And you also get a pattern. Um, uh, the 40 weight is the animal, and the 50 weight is, what was the 50 weight, Peter? I have to look, because I always forget. So the the cities, the Italy, um, is the 50 weight, and the animals are the 40 weight. Right. I always have to look, because I can't, I always forget. This is a less expensive way to buy the Orifil to start with, and it's a great way to build your collection of different colors. Most of us quilters tend to shy away from different colors because it doesn't show. 
but this is a really great way to build your uh, stash of different orophil colors. We love orophil here. Okay, so let's thread the machine. Uh, first, let's fill a bobbin. <clears throat> orophil thread. The, one of the accessories that I have laid out here, one of them, these are the spool caps that we're going to, that holds the uh, thread on the spool. And I like these little bitty ones because they fit right into this Orofil cone. So to thread, to fill the bobbin, and put the thread on, put the cone there. You know, I'm filming, so it's got to give me trouble. There we go. Now, to thread uh, this for the bobbin, you follow this path. One, two, and then for bomb, and see the arrow go, the path go back this way? You want to do that. Get a bobbin here. Put the bobbin on. Wrap your thread around it a few times. Come over here. Whoops. Cut your thread. This little gray thing here at the bottom of your bobbin has blades in it, so you'll cut your thread. Move, move it over, and then turn the machine on. Now I'm going at full speed. It takes, <clears throat> takes about a minute. When it gets full, it shuts itself off. For our demo purposes, I'm not gonna fill it completely, but that's how you do the bobbin. Once the bobbin is full, it has a, there's another cutter here that you can cut your thread. So your bobbin's ready. Now to thread the machine, you follow a different path and it's also lined up here on top of the machine. There's one, two, but this one shows the arrow going down. So that's three, you come back up. This is four right there. I'm going to sit down so I can see five, six is here, and then you go up over that number seven right there, and that puts that thread in the right position. I'm going to lock my machine and pull this lever down. What it does, it, it, there's a little wire that goes to the eye of the needle, and it forms a hoop. Let me do that for you again. Just follow that path, that number seven. Come over, cut your thread, push it down. See, it made a little um, made a little bubble, a little loop. Then you just pull on the loop, and now you're good. Another thing to mention while the while the foot is down. There's tension on that thread. That, that's why you want to lower the foot when you uh, do your bobbin. There's that loop, and now the machine is threaded. Then to um, put your bobbin in, once you've got it filled, you always want to make it kind of like a P, pull it off to the left, drop it in, this this lever right here and this little slit right here is what makes sure that you are in the tension correctly. If you don't get it underneath, oops, if you don't get it underneath this and this little lever right here, then your tension is off on your bobbin. Again, there's another cut cutter so that it will cut your thread for you. That's as easy as it is. Um, while the machine is locked, I'm going to show you one more thing. To, in order to change the um, needle plate, throat plate I should say, you just push this button right here and it releases the... This machine comes with two, one for standard any kind of stitching zigzag and one for straight stitching. If you notice the holes here is just made for straight stitching. When this throat plate is on, actually it goes this way, when this throat plate is on, all other stitches are blocked out. So if you ever change it and you can't get to the stitch that you want, 
look and see if you've got what throat plate you have on because if you have the wrong one on it will not do anything other than straight stitch um, that's the only thing that will show up as available I've made that mistake a few times and couldn't really couldn't figure out what I was doing for purposes today right now we're going to use the uh, standard one and there's a little bullseye right here push on that and that locks it back down it's asking me are we sure am I sure that I have the right foot attached and I'm going to say yes by just Xing out of that and now I'm going to unlock the machine okay so that's where we're starting I got some pretty red fabric so we can go through just a couple of, uh, of the stitches here this foot uh, this button here that with the arrows going up and down that is going to lower my foot once that is down, I can raise and lower the foot the standard way with the lever here in the back, but you have to lower it first with this in order for that to work. So, it, so we're on straight stitch right now. I'll just do a couple stitches here. Had it turned up all the way. I'm going to slow it back down. And that is stitch number one in utilities. Now I'm going to use this button here, which will cut the thread for me. And watch what happens. The foot raises. That's one of, another one of the features of this machine that I absolutely love. Once you cut the thread, the foot raises so you don't have to reach back there and um, raise the foot. So I'm going to lower it back down again. Stitch number two and three are very similar. Stitch number two, it will stitch four stitches forward and then four back and then sew. <clears throat> and then stitch until you stop it. If you like to lock your seams, that's a great one to, to use. So we're gonna go four, four, and then hit the reverse button and it will automatically do four forward and backwards. The locking stitch, the number three, it's going to do four in the same spot, and then go four. Hit reverse, it does four in the same spot again. So that's a couple of different ways that you can lock your, your stitches um, if you like to do that. For me, quilting, I don't usually do that, but I go to the quilting mode, which tightens my stitch. The standard... Um, Stitch length on this machine is 2.4. Um, in fact, we should talk about that for just a second. 2.4 is the standard stitch Let length. Let me come around over here for a second. Okay. Now, I showed them a, a picture of the stitches that's in the cloth so they can get an idea of the quality of the stitch. Okay. Is that the 2.4? This is 2.4, yes. So this is um, 4.5, this is a nine millimeter machine. So 4.5 means that needle is in the middle of the space that it can use. 2.4 is how tight your stitch is. You can lower it to make it really tight, or you can make it um, bigger. If you're doing a gathering stitch, it will go up to five. But on this machine, you don't have to remember that because you go to sewing applications go to gathering and it automatically lengthens your stitch for you so that's why i like the sewing applications part of this machine it's just so intuitive you don't have to remember that oh i'm going to do a gathering stitch i need to make my stitch longer and then you forget to do it and you go together and you break your stitches with this machine you don't have to worry about that because the machine is going to do it for you so let's go back to utility Okay, and then stitch number four just moves the needle to the left. These are, um, these next three are uh, stretch stitches. So what it does is it goes a little, goes forward and backwards to make it, um, you can, so you can use it for knits. See how the machine is going forward and backwards? Makes that stitch, um, able to be pulled on and it's not going to break if I pulled very hard on these if I did it where uh, if I did it with across the grain it would snap these threads but so these three here 
are for uh, stretch, stretch stitches. So does that give it extra reinforcement then? The yes, mm -hmm. okay. sure does. Let's use another piece and I'll show you better. I did a dress shirt and when I, when I was reclining on my arm, I could hear the thread pop in the shoulder. But yes. I didn't have the S7. I just had my old older machine that didn't do that. Yep. I'm gonna see if this will I'm gonna see if this is a better demo of that. It's just a little bit here. Another thing I love about the Tenomis is their feed dog system. I'm barely holding that and it's staying straight. Um, because they have seven feed dogs that hold that uh, hold your foot in place. What do most basic machines have as their feed dogs? I, I Is honestly it like three don't or know. Four? Yeah, I'm like sure. Three to four. But if you look at the look at this, there's two here in the front. There are two long ones, three mid, three in the middle, and these two right here kind of help pull it to hold it straight. That's cool. So yeah, they have Very a. Nice. It's these these machines are just a dream. Okay. So it didn't work as good as I thought, but this is a stretch stitch. So this fabric is stretched out. This just isn't very stretchy fabric. I don't, I don't have any knits back here. But you get the idea that that's what those stitches are for. And then the next one in mine is the um, zigzag. And if you see the little letter in there, that means the needle's in the middle. If I go to the other zigzag, the needle's on the right side. So the R stands for right, the M stands for middle, and that's uh, that's just a preference if you want your zigzag to be on the edge or if you want it in the middle. And this is another zigzag that's kind of a stretchy one. Let's see if I can get show what that one looks like. It's like three stitches. Instead of just being a solid zig back and forth zigzag, it's, uh, it's got stitches in between them. So again, it gives you more um, stretch. So that's that. I'm not really sure what number 11... Oh, huh. oh. number 11 is for oh. your um, free motion quilting. It's, call, it's calling for this foot, and it's doing a, um, like a blind, like a hand stitch uh, stitch like as if you were doing it by hand. And if you used monofilament thread, you would not be able to see the bottom stitch. The number 12 on this machine goes backwards, which I've never really figured out exactly the purpose of that, but it goes backwards. I've asked a couple of times, but I never really got a good enough answer that I, that I remembered. But anyway, so number 12 goes backwards. Who knew? <laughs> <laughs> then we go to number 13. And number 13 is where we start using different feet. The M foot, and if you notice on all the Janome machines, there's an initial in them, on them. See that M? And for this, M is in the over, over edge. So if you go to the over edge stitch, it's telling you what foot to use. Janome feet pop on and off with this little lever right here. So they just pop on and off. Makes it really easy to change them. And let's do another piece of fab. I wanted to do a longer one. So you're making uh, making draperies or you're making uh, a garment and you want to have the finished edges. You want to line this up with the edge of the foot. Just got a little lever here that you line it up with. And what it's going to do is it's going to give you a finished edge just like a serger. Sergers are wonderful. I used my serger last night uh, to serge around a quilt that I'm not gonna get bound for a while and I don't want it to ravel.
and surgeries are fast. But you don't have to have a surgery to have that same um, stitch. So if you're not into making garments, but you want to make draperies or pillows or something, and you don't want your uh, finished edges, to, you don't want to have raw edges, that's what that foot does, and that's the stitch that it makes. There's a couple of them. One of the other things I love about the Janomis is when you go to a different foot, it tells you what foot to, or go to a different stitch, I mean, it tells you what foot to use. So there's another one. There's another one. There's three. Aha. This is another stitch, but it does it. It's not the over edge stitch, so it tells you to use the A foot. <clears throat> one of the things about the over edge foot is these wires here are loose. So when you take your your foot off, I'm gonna just do a couple more stitches here, to show you. When you take your um, take your garment off or whatever you're sewing, you want to pull it to the back so that you don't bend those um, wires, okay? So that is the M foot. I'm gonna set it over here because I'm done with it. The next one, these are just some more decorative stitches. This foot, or this stitch, and this stitch, these three, oops, these two, use the um, G foot. See the G in there? And this is for blind hem. I like it because it's got a little ledge uh, or flange on it here. But it works pretty good for stitch in the ditch as well, but it's actually made for blind hem. Because I'm not a garment person, I'm not very good at uh, demoing this foot because I always have to really think about how your garment is folded in order to make it look like it's supposed to look. Um, so I'm going to try. You take your fabric or you take it, like a pant leg and you fold it. The book is great. The book has good directions on that. Um, I don't do it enough to remember it because I just don't get into the garment. I got a pair of pants yesterday from my sister that are too long, so I may be attempting that. But this is what the, this is what this is for, and as it's stitching, it's going to take a little nibble on this side of the fabric. So you have to practice a little bit to get where it just takes the right size bite. So that if this was your pant leg, Hold on. that would be the bottom of your pants. Now see, I didn't move over far enough. I got too big of a bite. So let's try it again and do try to do just a little bit better. Well, and if it was red thread, it would yes. disappear. Mm -hmm. It would just disappear. This is one for me that always takes a little bit of practice. Yeah, yeah that's a little bit better. But you kind of get the idea. And um, really, I, I, don't, I don't do garments, so I don't hem pants. So the directions are in the book. They're wonderful. That's what I would suggest that you do if that's something that you think you might want to do. So that's all the utility stitches. So let's go to the... Um, App, the stitch that, uh, or, I'm sorry, go back. Go to the um, decorative stitch icon. And this takes you to each one of the stitches. Each one of these categories are here. If you want to do applique, again, M is the middle, R is the right. You've got all of these different options for applique stitches. If you look at here, there's two pages of it. So you've got more than just what is shown on the screen, all of them that are here. And the applique um, stitches use the M foot, or the F foot, I'm sorry. The A foot, if you look at these two, look very similar. You can use either one of those for most of the stitches on the machine, but they're actually made a little bit different. 
um, for, for a purpose. The aphid is more for straight stitching. If you see, it's got these little grooves in there that helps guide the thread straight, where the F foot is smooth on the bottom, and it is made for, to be moving forward and backward like for decorative stitches, because when you're stitching a decorative stitch, a lot of times the fabric is being moved forward and backwards. So um, that makes it a little bit better stitch. In either one of these, because they have the opening for the full nine millimeters you can use, but I go by what the machine says because the machine is programmed to do the best with the foot that it's picked, that it shows you that you need to use. If I'm going too fast, guys, I'm sorry. I'm trying to give you a little bit of everything. I, um, I owned this machine for a long time, thought I needed something bigger, and quickly realized I didn't. I don't have anything that I can stitch down, so... Um, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to get this piece of fabric here and just pretend that this is um, an applique, okay? I'm going to set this on top of this like I'm appliquing it down. And let's do, the very first one is the uh, middle, and it's a fairly tight applique stitch. I want it to be right on the edge of the red. Isn't that a pretty applique stitch? It's hard to tell because I've got red on red, but if this was a different color, or if this was an applique uh, design that you're wanting to stitch down, that's what it does. And, and like I said, it's got all these different options. Um, 14 different options that you can use. If you see this, or this, or these, this is a locking stitch, so it's gonna, it's the bullseye, it's gonna lock your stitch, and this is a space. So if you're doing an applique and you wanna do a little space in between, you'll just hit that, and it will um, put a space there for you, okay? I mentioned that the M is the middle, the R is the right. Well, here this one goes on the left side. So the L means the needle moves to the left of, of, the, um, of the throat plate. Let's get out of applique. Heirloom is just a bunch of decorative stitches. Three pages of decorative stitches for heirloom. Kind of fun. Um, go to quilting. Quilting has six pages and all of the different stitches. Number two is the one that moves your, your uh, foot to a quarter inch. So if you pick number two, if you see down here, number two, the needle's in the 8.3 position, which means it's moved over to do a quarter inch and it tightened the stitch length. So if you're, if you're sewing and you end up having to cut it into different shapes or sizes, it's less likely to come undone because of that stitch length that tightened it up. I'm not going to go over all of these. These are just all of them that are available in, the, in what's considered the quilting mode. This is one I use a lot, the serpentine stitch. If I'm making something for a grandchild or something that I know is going to be washed a lot, a lot of time I will use this for my binding. Instead of sewing it by hand, I'll, I'll sew it on the back and turn it to the front and use a serpentine stitch to hold it down because uh, it's a little stronger than my hand stitching. So that's what that is. And again, these are just stitches where you can jump right to them. Two pages of satin stitches. Bridge stitches are the stitches you do in between. Uh, if you're doing some decorative stitches and then you want to do just a plain stitch and then start the decorative stitches again, that's what the bridge stitches are. And this takes you right to your decorative stitches, six pages of decorative stitches. Then the second page. Again, it's just all of the stitches that are available here. Just a quicker way to get to them other than going page by page by page to each one of them. So let's get out of that for a moment and go, oh, well, we, the A, of course, is just takes you right to your alphabet. 
The, then the t-shirt takes you to what Janome calls sewing application. And here's a great one for blind stitch. If I want to do a blind stitch, it tells me to use this G foot, and it tells me which ones I can use, one for woven and one for knit. So you don't have to remember. You just go to that applic sewing application, look at see what it is that you want to do, and hit that. One of the uh, feet that come with this machine is the rolled hem. So I'm going to hit rolled hem. I'm going to take a piece of fabric here. The rolled hem foot is the D foot. <clears throat> it snaps on like the others. The trick to, there's two tricks to a rolled hem. One is to trim the corner off just enough so that when you fit it into this curl that creates the rolled hem, oops, whoa, I'm letting it get away from me. That is what not to do. Created a little bit of a rolled hem, but I had no control over that because I didn't get it, um, get it didn't get it started right. Let me do this. This one I'm not cutting. So if you go to put this in here, it bumps up against the foot, and it's harder to get it started. When you got a little bit of that edge cut, I'm going to use a piece that doesn't have a, that one, that one wasn't pressed, so it was causing me trouble. Now, see it's forming that curve, the way this foot's made, it's got a little bit of a curve and you have to feed your fabric into it. I'm going to slow my fab my machine down a little bit. And then as it's stitching, I got I need to hold my fabric to keep that I'm I'm we probably going to stop it. Okay, so here we go again trying. I trimmed a little edge, a little bit of that off. Now, now I'm going. Once you get it going, you just hold your fabric to help it stay in that curve of that foot. A little stiletto would have been good now. And it made a nice little rolled hem. You can barely even see that it's rolled under. So that's what you do if you... Um, if you trim a little bit off of the end. Another trick is to sew a little piece. And again, I didn't get a hold of it very good. Have something that you can hold on to to feed that in there. Because it You've got to get it in this little curve. You've got to get into this little curve of this foot. Once you get it in there, then that, that piece right there on this foot creates the curve and makes it and rolls it under. Um, so another another way that I've been shown is to use a little, just get a little piece of, so a little line so that you have something to hold on to back here, behind it to feed it into that curve as you're doing it. One thing about this, um, this machine, see now that was a little bit better because I had something to hold on to to get it going. I'm gonna stop there because I kind of burgered up the end of it there. I did. Got it caught in there.
but it did it did work with holding on to that. This isn't the best demo. You need to play with this one to make it to make it really um, get a hang of it. It's another one that needs a little practice. This this is a two millimeter curve. They do make a four and a six millimeter, which makes it a whole lot easier to do. So that's that foot. The next one I'm gonna go into is quilting patchwork. Put put my O foot on. The O foot is for the quilting, comes with the or for the quarter inch, it comes with the flange. We sell uh, ones without the flange, which makes it kind of uh, you know, it gives you an option if, of another way to do it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sew this with the quarter inch here, and I'm gonna show you what this does. And I'm gonna go a little faster now. Now, now a new screen pops up. And what that's asking me is if my next seam going to be the same length or is it going to be different? Well, I'm going to tell it it's going to be the same. So I'm going to put my next piece under there. And hit the start button. And what it's going to do is it's going to sew the same length And then it's going to stop. And if I'm piecing and all of my pieces are the same length, then I don't have, I don't even have to look up. I just put the next piece under and the next piece under and the next piece under. If I hit start again with another piece, obviously the squares I cut are not all the same size, but if they were, and I put another piece under there, it's going to do the same thing. If it gets to the same stitch length, it's going to stop. So when you're piecing the same size over and over and over, just feed them. It works wonderful. This would have been a great time for another tool that we have that I love, that you just pop this down there and it cuts all these threads. You don't have to get your scissors out. Um, but... The, I, ho I hope I gave you the idea of what that uh, does and how it works. It's wonderful. <clears throat> so um, these are the different features. We're not going to do them all, but I'm going to show you. Basting. I chose basting. Again, it's given me that stitch length that if I wanted to base something together... Don't ever, don't forget to look to see what foot it tells you you need to put on. I've done that before and broke a needle because I had the wrong foot on. Okay, so now I'm on a basting stitch and it's going to do the stitch length changed so that I've got a basting stitch now. Um, again, all you have to do is go to your sewing applications, see what you want to do, and hit one of these, and it's going to automatically make it where you don't have to remember to change everything here, and it's going to tell you what foot to use. Um, if I'm going to do quilting, if I want to do free motion quilting, tells me, lower your feed dogs, you're going to do free motion quilting. And if you see... This is the foot that you use, and if you notice, there's no, it doesn't show the stitches. It's because you are creating the stitches by how fast or slow you move your fabric. So it gives you four different options where you can use um, a straight stitch, a zigzag, straight stitch two, zigzag two, different feet. This one takes the standard um, free motion quilting foot. This one, this machine comes with three different ones. 
for free motion quilting. One is open toe, one is closed toe, and this one is um, kind of kind of gives you a guideline if you want to do some echoing. You can see the red lines on there where you can line up your previous stitch with one of those red lines and do a little bit of echo stitching or quilting. Um, so that's what those three feet are. Um, so that's for quilting. Let's go to button. If you want to sew a button on, we have the T foot is for the button. And again, tells you, lower the feed dog. When you're sewing a button, and just so you know, the feed dogs are here on the side. I forgot to show you that. That's all it takes is to lower them. This snap, this one is a little bit different because it snaps on in two different places. Goes in the back and then to the front. And if I don't have, I didn't bring a button back here. But what it's gonna do is it's gonna stitch in the same spot and lock it. If I had a button, oh, what did I do? Stitch on that? Oops. Oops. Another oops. Looks like I kind of stitched right on the um, foot itself. Well, that was my mistake. But what it does is it, it does a, it will sew your button down. Okay. <laughs> and if we wanted to do a button hole, Let's go to buttonhole. Buttonhole was in after the utility stitches. So this is the foot to, that sews the buttonhole. What you want to do is, I'm going to take this off. This one is what you use when you're doing a garment and you've got interfacing on it. This is what this foot looks like. You move this forward and backwards with your button. Put your button in here. I'm going to use a um, bobbin. Tighten it up, and now that's, this this machine is going to think that's the size of my button. So you'll attach this just like we did the others. They just snap on. I'm going to put this on as if this was my garment that I was putting a button on. And it tells me here on my screen pull down BH lever, that's buttonhole lever. And in the book, it will show you, but I, I'm gonna show you now, it's right here. And what it's gonna do is, what happens is this little lever here starts here, and when it hits this part of it here, it knows that's the, the size of the button. So it knows to start over and go on the other side. Raise the feed dogs, aha. Machine smarter than me. We lowered the feed dogs to sew a button on. You have to raise them because now we're moving fabric. So I did the left side and I was doing the right side. Do a little tacking stitch up there. that tells me that it's complete. Cut the thread, it raises the foot, I take this off, and I have a button hole the size of my bobbin. If I'd had the button, if I'd had the button in there, it would have been the size of the button. Um, also on this, there's a little um, thing right here where if you've made your button and it's a little bit too short or a little bit too long, you can adjust that with this. So that will help fine tune the buttonhole. So that's what that one is. I think we've covered everything except for the AccuFeed system. The AccuFeed system is like, um, it is like uh, walking foot. 
the difference between the walking foot and the AccuFeed system is this little piece here actually connects right into the shaft of the machine. So you get a true movement. The top and the bottom are going to move at the same time. And in order to attach this, we have to take the ankle off because it has its own ankle. Take that off. This fits right in where that um, screw comes off. I have big hands, so I always have a little bit of trouble getting it going. There we go. Don't want to over tighten it, but you want to give it a little one, make sure that it's in there good. And now, if Peter, can you look at the show the back right back here? Uh -huh. That little hook that was on the back of this foot fits right in here. That that engages it, and that that's going to make the top and the bottom feed dogs work together with each other. So that if you're doing a plaid and you want your plaids to match up perfectly, you want that engaged. And to do the do the um, walking foot, to engage the walking foot on the front of the screen here, see these three little arrows with lines underneath them, or three little triangles with lines underneath them? Click that, and it's going to ask me, make sure I have the right foot attached, and we do, and now it's engaged. So what it's going to do is move the top and the bottom layer at the same time, keeping them together. What it, what it does is it adds two more feed dog. This, these two feed dogs are part of this foot, so as it's moving it, it's keeping the, this is helping hold the top and the bottom in the same spot. So that's what a walking foot does for you, moves them together. So I think we've gone over pretty much everything on the machine. Um, I see a clear table over there. Is that is that something that you can purchase for the machine? Yes, this table is an extension table. Comes from um, we we send off to Genome to have them made, and they're made per machine. They they cut out this this part of your machine, so you have to take the the base off of this, and it gives you an extra. It's eighteen by twenty four, I believe. Uh, wonderful extra space to support your fabric if you're doing a quilt and you've got a, you know a lot of fabric and you you don't want it to just fall off the edge of your machine and drag and pull on, pull on your stitches as it's pull, um, dragging it down a little bit that um, that is something we can order for you it's 119 dollars takes about four or five weeks to get um, so yes that's an accessory that that would be very helpful if you're doing a lot of quilting. I think that covers the machine. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to call. Um, always in Stitches, Novusville, Indiana, 317-776-4227, or email us at alwaysinstitches1.com, right? And if there's anything that you that I've showed you that you would, you're interested in getting, we have a, a girl that does nothing but our online orders, so you would email orders at alwaysinstitches1.com, and Jennifer would be happy to take care of you. Again, if you have any other questions that I didn't cover, don't hesitate to give us a call. I'm Stephanie, and I work in this department, and uh, I'm a part-timer here. So I'm here usually Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, but Kathy in our sewing department is here five days a week, and she uh, will be more than happy to help you in any way that we can. All right? Have a great day. Thanks. Bye.